All right, thanks for watching. And today we would like to solve the mother of all PDEs, first order constant coefficient PDEs. And for instance, today we will find a general solution of 2ux plus 3uy equals zero. And the cool thing is we'll employ a sort of geometric method to do this because notice this equation kind of says that a certain directional derivative of u must be zero, which means that u will be constant along something and the goal is to figure out what this something is. So start with this equation. Notice that it's kind of a dot product. This is the same thing as saying that ux, ui, dotted with the vector 2, 3, equals 0. And this vector of all derivatives, that's just another way of saying the gradient. So in other words, the gradient of u dotted with 2, 3, equals 0. And if we call this vector v, this says that the gradient of u dotted with v equals zero. Not this zero, just the scalar zero. And what is this saying? So notice, if you remember from multivariable calculus, if you take the gradient dotted with a vector, it means the directional derivative. Little side note, technically this vector has to have magnitude one for the definition, but it's okay, just divide this equation by magnitude of v and you get the pure directional derivative. So in other words, what this is saying is the directional derivative of u along the vector 2, 3, here the vector 2, 3, has to be zero. So what this saying is, in fact, u, our solution, must be constant on lines parallel to v. So u is constant on lines parallel to v. For instance, again, this is the vector v, and whenever there's a line parallel to it, u has a certain value. So for instance, on this line, you see where u is parallel, sort of to this, u might be 2 here. Or on this line, I don't know, again, parallel to v, u might be minus 1. The values are completely arbitrary. And in fact, any value of u you pick along this line will actually be a solution to this equation. Or for instance, here on this line, I don't know, u might be 9,001 because it's over 9,000. And so basically what we want to say, we want to say what's our general solution? Literally any function that is constant on those lines. Because no matter, as I said, no matter which value you pick, uh, it will still be a solution to your PDE. Because notice this is equivalent. You being constant on a line is equivalent to solving the PDE. Which again, is pretty amazing because you started with this algebraic thing and you ended up with this geometric interpretation. So in other words, what we would like to say, our solution, it's simply u of x, y is any function of question mark where question mark is a variable that characterizes each line. In other words, what we would like to find is some variable question mark that is constant on each line. So where question mark is a variable that is constant each line. For instance, this line maybe might be question mark equals 7. Okay. So when we say well question mark equals 7, then we can just valid, specify f of 7 to be 9001 and that would be a solution. Or here, I don't know, question mark might be negative 3. 
and when, when you say the question mark negative 3, it means this line, and then you just specify any value on this line. Or here, question mark might be, I don't know, 0. Why not? So in other words, all we need to do is again find a constant that's constant on each line. So find this variable that is constant on each line. And this is actually not too hard to find because we know what's the characteristic of the line. We know that it's directed by this vector v. So what is the slope here? The slope of this line is 3 half. Slope equals, you know, rise over run, 3 halves. So what is the equation of this line, each line? y equals to 3 half x plus c. Why not? And then basically you can, you know, uh, rewrite this. So we get y minus 3 half x equals c. And by the way, that might be a choice of a variable, but let's make it easier. Let's multiply both sides by 2 and you get 2y minus 3x equals 2c, which is still constant, so we'll just relabel this as c. And in particular, what is this variable c? It's a, or I guess, what is this constant c? Uh, again, sorry, what is this variable 2y minus 3x? It's a variable that is constant precisely on each line. For instance, I don't know, if you're 2y minus 3x, oh no, 2y minus 3x is 5, then it might mean we're on this line. Or if you're uh, 2y minus 3x is 1, then we're on this line. Or if 2y minus 3x It's minus 1 and we're on this line. So notice this actually solves our problem uh, because our question was, can we find a variable that is constant on each line? Yes, indeed. This variable is 2y minus 3x. And in particular, this is question mark. And therefore, we actually get the solution of our PDE. We get uxy equals f of 2y minus 3x. And indeed, if you want, you can check using the Chen Lu that if 2ui, sorry, 2ux plus 3ui, well, what you do is two times, you differentiate this with respect to x to get a minus 3, I think f prime of 2y minus 3x, plus 3 times derivative with respect to y, 2 times f prime, 2y minus 3x, and boom, those things cancel out, and you indeed get 0. And in fact, that is the solution of this equation. And lastly, just two quick remarks. First of all, how do you remember this? So, So, by the way, I forgot to say, but in general, the solution of AUX plus BUY equals zero, then becomes UXY equals F of, again, two is just A, AY minus BX. Either you can think of it as AI LMAO, or another way of thinking about this is simply think of the determinant of a, b, x, y, and that's also a, y minus b, x. And now lastly, you may think, well, what's an application of this? Well, there's actually a very neat one, because PDEs, they have very good physical applications. There is one equation called the transport equation, which is ut plus cx equals zero, and that's a really cool equation because it measures the density of a fluid as it gets transported at the speed c. And we can actually rewrite this in terms of our equation here. So this is cux plus ut equals zero. So here a equals c and then uh, b equals one. Mm. Then let's see, okay, uh, 
and then b equals 1. So what we get is uxt equals f of, so ay, so ct minus bx, so f of ct minus x. But look, f is arbitrary, so if f of x is a function, so is f of minus x. So you can actually write this as f of minus that, which is x minus ct, again for some possibly different f, and you get the solution, uxt is f of x minus ct. And this is very cool in terms of calculus, because how does the graph of f, x minus, f of x minus ct compare to the graph of f? Well, if this is the graph of f of x, well, f of x minus ct literally looks like the same graph, but you, try, but you shift it to the right. Shift it to the right by ct units. So you can think of it as sort of this f, this profile just traveling to the right at a speed c. Or you could say f gets transported to the right at speed c. Just like that name transport equation. All right, that's all I wanted to say for today. Next time I'll solve variable coefficients, first order equations. And if you like that and you want to watch more PDE and more math, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.